know, answer all those questions. Uh, so, oh, thank you for the PowerPoint. Uh, whoever has it up. I got you, Brad. Yeah, oh, Brian. Yeah. So and, is, is it uh, Sorry, guys, but I just want to let you know um, I have been made a host, so I'm I've started the recording. Oh, thank you. All right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, so the agenda will be pretty pretty easy. The yeah, you know, we'll talk about the last release we had, the update, some of the known issues that are out there, some question and answer, and then uh, upcoming sessions. So the the first thing I, I did want to say, because Sandy did just mention it, that this is a recorded session. So um, just please be advised that this is recorded. Uh, if that makes a difference in your questions. Um, with that, let's go to the PowerPoint, Brian. And let's go to slide uh, three, which just talks about the update. There we are. All right. So the some of the things that we resolved before Christmas, and it seems like, you know, it seems forever ago, but uh, <laughs> there we were able to resolve, you know, the inability to save drafts uh, for a dispute, uh, the signature section for responses. Um, that that was pot is wasn't populating it now is, and then the uh, you were previously unable to amend a dispute. Um, and now you are so everything uh, you know was fixed uh, was tested and you know we've had a a good response to these fixes because you know we've seen stuff coming in obviously the holidays things are really slow and we don't have as many filings coming through those uh, two weeks but you know we have seen uh, things that we're able to get through uh, I want to go to slide four Okay. Yeah, so we have some uh, known issues on intermittent document upload failures, and we're working with some of the folks that are in the community that are having this issue. And that's, uh, Brian, we're, yeah, we're working with people that are having that issue. Because Right now, because it's intermittent, we are seeing um, that it possibly is a firewall issue on certain people's on certain uh, companies' sides because we're seeing it in uh, certain firms and certain um, locations that are having this. So we were going to work with some people, some folks, IT staff, um, to help with the firewall settings to see if that's what these uh, intermittent document uploads are having issues with. Uh, inability to upload other filings on closed cases. You know, so if a case is closed on our end and you needed to upload something, it doesn't allow that. So, you know, the case needs to be reopened for those filings. So we're working on that. And then uh, the service process designee is missing on some service lists. Uh, that's been uh, identified and something we are, we are currently working on. That's slide five. All right. So here's some of the, the frequently asked questions that we that we receive, and you know I this is why I have Brian here because he he helps me uh, answer these questions, and I, I don't need to read them all to you. But you know how do I uh, file a request for assistance slash response to a request? Brian, do you kind of want to take this over? Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. We are we we do get a, a number of questions still coming in of people who are having uh, different kinds of difficulties with filing these requests and the response uh, included with that is things like the category question, which is part of the filing of a request or a response. Also, uh, questions about uh, uploading documents is included in these the generate the requests or the response. Once you've done a request or a response, we've got some questions on printing those and some questions on the affidavits. So what I wanted, what we thought would be good to do would be for me to go through and basically use this uh, time as a bit of a tutorial. And I will take you guys through the filing of a rehab request and show you where the response would be, show you where the cert would be. And I'll point out a few areas that people are um, often getting caught up on to help you become more comfortable with using the system without any glitches at all. So I'm gonna go to, uh, to my uh, test campus uh, user profile. 
then the another attorney is the name of my test attorney. So what I'm going to do is start from the beginning to show you guys how I how one in a law firm would file a request for cert or a request for assistance. Actually, it's a request for cert or a medical request or rehab request, all of which are now called request for assistance. And I want to just uh, remind everybody that in the old world, we had the med request, the rehab request, those forms we all know and love. When we are creating these requests for assistance, you're, these are going to be a generated new form that replaces the old med request and rehab request. So you will not need to do those forms anymore. Uh, sometimes people think they need to do their old med request or rehab request and then upload that through campus. And that's not the case. We're gonna be generating a request for assistance, which creates, which initiates that dispute. And any uploads you do in the process would be things like your exhibits, your IME reports, your medical records, your bills, your prescription receipts, and that kind of thing. So. With that said, let's go through it. So what I'm going to do is start as if we don't know, uh, as if we don't already have the claim in our in our file or in our dashboard. We do uh, submit a filing, like you all know. We're going to go to initiate a dispute. This is if we're going to request a cert or request a med a med conference or a rehab conference. Try that again. All right, what's happening here? Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna refresh it. Oh, must have been just a little bit of a lag. So we have the classic three ways that you can locate a claim in campus. What I'm going to do is uh, use the, the campus employee number, and I'm going to enter this as uh, 01616870. Now, here is something where people often will get stuck. As you can see, or as well, maybe you guys don't see this, but what we have here with the campus employee number is a WID with a zero or two zeros in front of it. The concept of the campus employee number is to have an EE with nine digits in this format. And if there's a WID already, the WID would be everything after the zero. So the WID in this case would be 16168706. If the WID were only seven digits long, like 16168870, we'd need to put two zeros in front of the WID, and that creates an employee number. So if you have an employee number, you have the WID. Just take out the zeros, the leading zeros. If you have a WID, you have an employee number. Just add enough leading zeros to get to a total of nine digits. So now for the date of injury, we're going to go and know about this one. It's 12-1 uh, of 2020. Make sure you put the four digits for the year. Uh, it says two digits there, but if you only put one digit, that actually seems to be what it prefers. Oops, don't need to do that. Now, we got to wait here and we'll see if it pulls up the claim. Uh, and again, as, as I've told many of you on the phone, the claim is synonymous with the date of injury. And it did. Here's somewhere where people sometimes get stuck. They think that they need to click on this claim to somehow select it. You don't need to because it found the claim in question that you were looking for. And so it already tells you that it has selected it. So you're good. You don't need to add any related claims here. Uh, it's not or it's not telling you there's any related claims. So you're fine. So this is good. We're going to go forward. Now we need to choose. The so if I'm rep if I'm a defense counsel, I'm going to choose Up North Insurance as the insurer. We know that defense counsel represents the employer and the insurer, but here in campus, while we're working on a change to that, it only requires you to add the employer or the insurer. You're not saying declaring that you don't represent both. 
campus simply only needs to tell it needs you to to uh, needs you to put in one or the other. Now watch this. This is where some people have some difficulties too. So what must be happening here is that the up north insurance insurer entity maybe isn't fully populated or built out in campus. That's not a problem. We're just going to go back and I know we employ we represent the employer also. So let's just choose the employer instead. So we're good now. If none of these parties are who I'm representing, we can click and do a manual addition. Now we need to identify the other, like it says, the other parties in the dispute. What we're doing here is building out the caption. So if you've got your Summit Orthopedics or your RTW or whoever might be a potential intervener, you don't need to add them here because this is just the caption, the primary captions. We're only looking for the primary parties. Another thing to keep in mind as we go through this is that anything that's got an asterisk on it has to be populated, has to be completed. So as you go through, when I talk to a lot of people, I'll see people sometimes miss a step. So be careful as you go through one step after another and make sure everything is completed. Uh, now, choose a dispute resolution service. What are our choices? If I wanted something to be certified, I'm going to choose certify the dispute. That's easy. If I wanted a med request or a rehab request, basically a med dispute or a rehab dispute, what I must choose is request an admin conference. And we're not saying that dispute action is rehab request because what we're already creating is a rehab request or a form formally known as a rehab request. If you'd put uh, if you just choose request no service now, just initiate the dispute, it's not going to go anywhere. So don't do that. Sometimes people say, I might, I might not want the conference because we're going to mediate. And that's fine. But if you want to go, if you want this to be processed properly, you still got to click request the conference. If you don't need the conference later because you've mediated or you want it rescheduled or reset or continued, that's perfectly fine but you've got to pick that you're requesting the conference. So either request conference or request cert. And if you're requesting conference because it's a med request or rehab request and it hasn't been certified, that's okay. You can do a request for cert first if you don't want to spend the time to pull together more information for the full request for assistance slash med request. But if you do this as a med request and it's not been certified, our arbitrators will see that, they check for that, and they'll go through the cert process. So don't worry if you're not sure if it's been certified, you can just go forward with the requesting a conference. All right, Here, like I said uh, just a minute ago, everything that's got an asterisk has to be completed. So watch for those as you go through this. I've started to see several people that See, uh, seem to have missed this question altogether. And I think it's, they think that this is the title of the dispute section. So just be cautious about that. This is a question. It's got an asterisk. We got a drop down. So we got to choose med or rehab. Now, under the dispute issues, we need to add something here. I've seen some med requests or rehab requests come in where people have not added an issue and they've simply put in the narrative uh, description of their argument. Uh, that part, which as you all know, would be on the second, on the old rehab or med request, that, that uh, narrative section at the top of the second page of the med request or the rehab request. Everyone knows about filling that part out and sometimes people just fill that part out and they don't actually add an issue here. And when that happens, we have a rehab or a med request that has no issues and is going to get jammed up. It won't be able to go forward. So make sure you add an issue here. There isn't an asterisk by it, but you have, excuse me about that, but you have to do it. So we're going to add an issue. So what are we looking for? Service or seeking reimbursement. These reimbursements typically are like if someone is paid for some prescriptions or they paid for some glasses, they want to get money back. So if it's something else, if it's not that, I would do a service. So we're talking service would be uh, whether it be approval for a surgery, uh, uh, approval for a wheelchair, a lift, anything like that. And we got to go through the rest of these uh, uh, fields to build out 
that request for assistance. So we'll say equipment here. Let's do a higher lift. Um, request approval for lift. Now, here's something else that people sometimes get a little stuck on. Uh, you'll have, for many of the paralegals, you'll have the attorney that's given you uh, uh, sometimes a, a lengthy narrative rationale for their for their uh, claim. You don't need to put that here. You will have an opportunity to put it later. This right now is just the summary of what it is you're claiming. And this corresponds to on the old med request, we have request on the first page where you're just identifying what it is. You'll do your rationale later. So just a summary at this point. Okay, space so far. Now, what are the supporting attachments? Like I said before, you're not gonna be doing your, your own med request or rehab request and uploading that here. What you're gonna wanna would be like your med exhibits, your, your HICFA bills, your QRC reports, your IME whatever it may be in a PDF format. And let's just throw this test one in there. Now, if you want to get specific with a category, you, you can take a look at these and you can add something, but these will some, the category will limit, depending on which category you pick, it'll limit the kind of types that you have. But as you can see, a category does not have an asterisk, a type does, so I think an easy way to do this is just leave the category alone. So let's just go straight to the type. You got a bunch of different choices here, but uh, if you don't see anything that is, you know, you're comfortable with, you can just put one of six conference. That's again, what, you know, med requests or rehab requests lead toward a 176.106 conference. Pre-populate the description, you can change it here. So we can do IME report, for, or maybe not a narrative report, narrative report for Hoyer left, something like that. And we can upload. Now, if we want to add documents, we can just go through that upload process again. All right, now we move down. This also doesn't have an asterisk, so it's not required. But this is that for that section where many of you will remember on the top, the top of the second page of the old med request or rehab request, where the attorney puts out their lengthy narrative rationale as much as they want. Here you could attach if you want by uploading a, a PDF document that has the attorney's rationale, or you could copy and paste it into here. And so I'm just going to put here detailed rationale. So this is what I promised you would be that second area where you can go into more detail about the claim you're making. All right, let's go to next. Sam, seeing the chat now, so if anyone does want to stop me partway through, um, just let me know, of course. There so, aren't any questions at this point, Brian. Okay, thanks, Sandy. So we have, uh, a summary of what we've done so far. We've got our, our type of dispute populated, uh, the name of the attorney, got to put the attorney ID. People sometimes get stuck here too. Some attorney IDs have a zero, some of them do not. If you're not sure, feel check with the attorney. If you're still not sure, feel free to call us because we have a database, as you can imagine, of all the external users of campus. It's very easy for us to just go check and see what the attorney ID is for that particular attorney. And you're going to be going through this, by the way, whether you're logged in as the attorney or as the legal support staff. This will be your the only difference if you're legal support staff is that there will be a question asking you, are you filing on behalf of? And that will and but because I'm in the attorney login right now, it's not going to come up there. So now we're down to the name. I have seen a couple times people have omitted putting the name in there. Again, you've got to put a name in. So I'm another attorney. Now, watch. Uh, I have to click the checkbox, and I have a next. Now I want to show you something which is another area that people can sometimes have some difficulties with. 
if you think if you don't get the work the name quite right like maybe you you thought there was a middle name a middle initial what's going to happen now is it's not going it's going to error you because it looks for exactly how is this spelled for the login name in campus and so you can just look at the top part of your screen to see how that attorney's name is spelled if you're unsure give us a call but that's a classic problem where people might have the name maybe is it tom or thomas that kind of thing can throw people off it's got to be the way it is for the person to log in so you're going to take that out here's another problem that people will sometimes run into every now and then i notice that there will be a space put after the name of the person it looks perfectly fine it looks harmless but when you go now and do your next check, it's not gonna move you forward. Something is not right. And it's highlighting here. You're thinking to yourself, but it looks fine. I've spelled it right. Watch out, go to the end, and I'm gonna do a delete. I took out that space character. The same thing will happen every now and then when people are maybe copy and pasting. If there's a space in front of the name, it's going to recognize it thinks that the space character is part of the name and so it's it's not matching the login name so take that space out and one other thing that's happening that sometimes happens if a person is in the name in the name of their uh, or in this name line if they don't leave the name line and go outside of it, sometimes campus thinks that they're still typing the name and it won't light up the next button. So those are three tips. Watch out for the spelling, watch out for the spaces on the front or the back, and watch out for clicking outside of that line, which shouldn't be a problem if you just enter the attorney and then do your checkbox. Now you're not in the attorney name line. And we can go on to next. I'm just going to pause there for a second in case we've got any questions about that. Seems like a small thing, but I, I do get a number of questions about that. So I want to make sure I hit that. All right. Now we're to the No questions. Answer. All right. Thanks, Sandy. You have to serve somebody when you're doing this. These are all options for being served. You'll see all these people are service of process designee. That means if you're serving someone in the firm, these people have all chosen to get a copy of it also. That's their choice and that's fine. So don't worry about it if you're thinking, but I didn't mean to serve Robert Marley. That's okay. If he populates automatically when you choose the, the target attorney, that's okay. So we got to pick somebody. We're a couple people here. Okay. Now, watch this. What is happening, what you need to watch for when you picked a few people, when you pick the people you wanna serve is you need to be aware of the service method. It's either gonna be US mail or it'll be electronic. If it's electronic, they'll be served the moment you it's accepted, the moment the RFA is accepted. If it's mail, you're gonna to need to print the RFA you just generated and drop it in the mail to them. But look down here, we've clicked Angela adjuster and we've got no legal service required. So even though we've clicked her, because this doesn't say mail or electronic, she's not going to be served. So if you want her served, you'll need to go up to add service recipient and enter her manually. Same if someone, uh, you click someone and over in this column, it says other. If it says other, it's not identifying by mail or by electronic service. And so that's not going to be a proper service. You've got to add them up at the top. So let's add Angela Adjuster. And I type terribly. Role. This is another area where people can get a little confused. What we're basically meaning here is who is that person standing in for? So for Angela Adjuster, she's standing in for the insurer. If it were a plaintiff attorney, we would say the role would be employee because they're standing in for the employee. If it were a defense attorney, we would say role employer or insurer because they're standing in for them. Actually, there might be an attorney option. I don't think there is. So for the attorneys, it's who are they standing in for? Angela standing in for the insurer. 
So we're just going to do test address. We're going to put her in. Uh, going to put her in West St. Paul, and save. Now that we've added Angela as a manual service recipient, if we look down at the bottom, there she is. And as we wanted, we have her plan to be served by U.S. Mail. And because we've done, we've got her there. We can just unclick here, so she's not going to appear twice on the same affidavit of service. All right. So we've got everybody on here. Everyone, I'm checking just to make sure that everyone's being served. Uh, electronic, 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 and mail. So everybody's good. Now. Little declaration, name of story. This now is the person who is filing the document, the person who is logged in right now. So if I'm a paralegal, I still got to put my name. So I'm going to put another attorney because that's my name. I'm going to click here and so it's not, it's not giving me any trouble which is just fine. I'm not going to put that space and I'll just show you again what happens if you put that space. So there, it looks like I'm right, but what had happened is somehow I slipped a space character in. So I'm going to take that out. And there, now we're good. Now, look at this. This is the thing I was trying to replicate before. Everything looks fine. I've got the declarations. I've got the attorney. There's no space, but there's no submit form button. This is what I was saying again a couple minutes ago, where campus sometimes thinks that because I'm still here, I haven't completed entering out, filling out this box. So if I'm done, all I need to do is click out of it. Simple as that. So be aware these little things uh, uh, can can throw you off, but there's some there's some simple solutions for them. And so now everything's done. I've got my attachments done. It's going a little slower this week than other weeks. I apologize to everybody on the outside if they're if they're finding that also. Sandy, how are we doing on any questions coming in on the chat? We don't have anything. All right. So it has taken it. So those people that we have served electronically are now served by way of an email that will be sent to them. We can now look at the dispute, which we now created by filing this request for assistance, or we can look at the document, which we created just now. And this dispute will now be in our dashboard under my disputes. If we want to look at this, and we're going to need to look at this because there's a few people that need to have a mail service. Here's another tip. Usually we're all used to, and until three months ago, I was used to this too, doing a left click, and that's going to replace this entire screen with the document. Instead, we're going to do a right click and we're going to open it in a new tab, and that will then leave this screen here it'll just add another screen so when i click this i want you guys all to watch up here for those of you who don't already know how to do it and we're gonna create a new tab and you can see it up here it's creating so now i can talk forth between these two screens and here's the request for assistance that we generated this again is the new form of what was formerly known as the med request or the rehab request or the request for cert the request for assistance covers all three as you can see here because we selected it and it includes the specific issue which we've clicked on and it has our section on the addition the detailed rationale like i told you about if we wanted to go into more detail there we populated my name And if we move further down, we can see the affidavit that got automatically generated. So you don't need to make your own affidavit. This says who are who they are sending, uh, who we're serving by mail, causing a copy in the, a copy in the mail. It's going to be December 15, 
few of these people are going to be by mail and electronically. Who are we serving electronically? Well, a better way to say it would be who has already been served electronically. We just need to watch for this list here and then print out this document, the whole document, and drop those in the mail to people. A way to do that, and now I'm going to go down a little further. And what we can see down here is uh, this test attachment. This is my attachment that I uploaded. So you're going to want to print this also. And this is an address label. And this is basically an eight and a half by 11 uh, blank sheet of paper with the addresses of the people you're serving by mail that you can use to put in a win window envelope if you guys, you, if anyone uses that. So remember, this can be used if you want to, and this will be needed to be included. But getting back to our primary goal here, which was to print this thing so that we can drop in the mail to those several people that we're going to serve by mail. What we want to do is rather than do a, a print screen or anything like that, which will show the right tap sidebar, we're going to go to this download button. Now, when we open it, this is again, the request for assistance that we just created. And it's all, it's in a nice format for being able to print it or save it to our own drives at our offices or wherever we're these days. So I am going to get out of this now. I don't know how to do that. Well, stopped up here with everything at the taskbar of the Teams chat, but I'm just gonna ignore that. So I'm gonna go back to the, this is again, the document and this is the, completion screen. These things were preserved because, again, I did a right click. And if I wanted to go into the dispute, I could right click there also. And the dispute has, you know what's a dispute? When you have a DS number here, a dispute falls. Disputes always fall under the umbrella of the claim because at the beginning of our conversation here, the claim is synonymous with the injury. And if you've got a dispute, a med request, a rehab request, a request for cert, those all fall under an injury. So we are in a specific mitigated injury under that injury. And what we do is go into the documents and we can see the request for assistance that I just made and we could go into it for here also. One other thing here is that uh, you might need to amend your dispute sometimes, or you might need to add some additional attachments, some exhibits. Like if you're a paralegal, maybe the day before the conference, you're going to want to send the exhibits to the arbitrator. And the way to do that would be to go into this dispute and you'll be able to get to it because you can get now in your disputes tab on your dashboard. Go to the submit filing button, drop down. And if you want to submit something else for the, for us to see, go into other filing. Filing is something you're going to be using quite a bit. And this is basically a free form opportunity for you to upload anything else you think we want to see. Maybe it'll be an additional piece of uh, additional medical record. Maybe it'll be another bill. Uh, could be uh, intervention notice that you've sent out and served on someone. Could be anything that could be anything that you think we need to see. You can upload it here and it will get and it'll get into the file. Now another thing will happen through this submit filing button in the dispute is the responses. If someone is now served with a med response or med request or rather a request for assistance and they need to file their med response or their rehab response. They're going to go into the dispute, which they'll have access to, and they'll go to submit filing. If I were the responding party, there would be a choice here for, oh, actually there is a choice for the response. And I pick the response. And it will walk me through everything I need to, uh, to complete that whole, to complete the proper response. 
click everybody in the caption, no other parties. Did we? Here's something that you guys, I should tell you about too. Did you exhaust the re dispute resolution process for managed care? Everybody knows that managed care, certified managed care plans are becoming few and far between. But nevertheless, we have a question for whether it's exhausted. And we, if it is, if there is none, you have to say, yes, it's exhausted. Because yes is a replacement for NA. If you say no, then campus will think that there is a managed care dispute resolution process that you need to do. And it's going to start to grill you on what need, on information about that. So if there is none, say yes. You're done when you had to do. And it will give you now an opportunity to add whatever information you need for your um, response. One other thing I'm going to show you the dispute. Sometimes you need to amend your medical request, the request for assistance, and you could do that in button two. Amend dispute. So if you're going to be doing it, if you need to add a new party, if you need to add a new issue, all that can be done through this button right here. And remember, other filing is your catch all for anything else that you want to send to us on that dispute. Maybe it's an intervention notice, maybe it's an objection to an intervention, whatever it might be, you can send it through other filing. And I think that uh, wraps up my overview that I want to show everyone for the submitting of disputes. So I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint now and see if we missed anything. So we've talked about uh, requests and response, talked about cert, because you could have clicked request cert, talked about the category and just use the document type. We've talked about uploading the documents, downloading and printing. Um, sometimes you might want to serve some, you might want to upload something like an IME and it doesn't, campus doesn't have option for you to do an affidavit of service through campus. If that happens, you can just do your own affidavit of service and you can upload that affidavit of service into campus, just like you would have uploaded an intervention notice you sent out to a provider. The last thing, so that, that all was covered in this little demo I did. The last question I wanted to hit for everybody is the question about how do I file information if I can't find the claim? Finding the claim, if you're trying to file a dispute or you're trying to uh, file a, or send in a notice of appearance and notice a rep can be, uh, it, it has to be precise. So if you have, for example, the uh, a digit off in the WID, which I see, or a digit off in the social, or a letter off in the name of the injured worker, it's not gonna, it's not gonna tell you, is it, is it this instead? It's not gonna give you a close enough. It's gonna say no. So if you're thinking that we've got someone whose last name is uh, 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 Anderson and you're not sure if it's an S-E-N or an S-O-N and you know, maybe you've got it right, but maybe, you're, maybe the in employer when they filed the Freud had it wrong. If you're thinking that, you know what, I think this claim it should be in Do at Dolly, it should be in campus. When you're trying to submit something and it's saying we can't find it, you know, and it invites you to basically create a temporary file, before you do that, you might wanna check in with us to do some research for you or with you to see if we can locate it also. Because what we want to avoid is a situation where you're filing something at DLI because uh, under a temporary or rather a shell file or a shell claim. We don't want a shell claim created if there is already one that exists. So we're happy to work with you to do a little research to see if maybe there's a digit off or a letter off somewhere where we can help you identify that claim. I think that's all I wanted to add. Uh, Sandy, If I don't know if you want to add anything or Brad, I can turn it right back to you. I have nothing to further to add. Thanks, Brian. There are no questions either. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I think the going over some of those tricks uh, that you did there is very beneficial to everybody. Uh, that, you know, <clears throat> yeah, we, we want to make this a smooth process. So I, I appreciate you uh, doing that. And I know the community uh, also appreciates that. 
you know, for uh, the next you know thing, we do want to talk about Campus Central. So we are putting all of our release notes on there. We're also putting um, FAQs up there and putting um, the newsletters that we send out up there. So there, this this page is being updated quite often. So there is the most recent information on there. If you uh, if anybody wants to go there and you know they have a question, maybe you don't want to you know call the help desk. You you know has this been covered? Uh, there is uh, that information out there. Uh, the big one is is really on the releases because we do release weekly, which is a pretty fast cadence for IT releases. So sometimes you know what what maybe didn't and we release on Thursday. So if it wasn't working Wednesday, sometimes it is working on Friday. Um, and we do send out those release notes, but we also, you know, if anybody has any questions on what was released, please go to that page. That will uh, help you, um, you know, understand what's what's out there and what we're still working on. Uh, next slide. I think we're ready for questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, I know Brian covered a lot, and since he's the expert, I would definitely uh, recommend asking him while he's on here. I think I saw a question come in from Gina on the chat. Flashed in front of me for a second. Okay, Brian. Gina is asking: Is there an update to requesting any and all Dolly records for all dates of injury for an employee? My understanding is that there was going to be some development on being able to do a, a multiple request to. Uh, to um to the records department uh am i wrong on that brad do you recall there's no current development on that i know that there's uh there's been talks of it but we have not um issued any of that the you know the current process we have is, is outlined in the on the in the campus page as far as the how to do it any and all uh where it does take our department our staff to uh go through there and, and actually identify those records. Okay, so we'll be able to identify which injuries uh, you, which injuries we have, and then you can do your requests for those individual injuries. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. And I and I don't wanna speak out turn. I know Richard and CRT worked on that, but I believe that is 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 out there and that, that process is outlined on him. There's another question, Brian. It's uh, this is from Sheila. We are finding that notices of mediation sessions are only being served on the attorney, not the service or project designee, designee. Is this the way it's supposed to be? That does not sound familiar to me. I would have thought that uh, if an attorney has sent something, the service of process designee at their firm would also be getting it. So they, they, they should be. They should be Brian. They should Brad, be okay. to cut you off. And, and on on our known issues, I uh, I had brought that up. There there in some instances they're not pulling in that service of process, and we're currently working on that to make sure that. that oh yeah, right. Perfect. I think you mentioned that earlier, even in this meeting, Brad. Sorry about yeah. that. Thanks. Yeah. Right now, I have no other questions. You did such a good job, Brian. They have no questions. Or <laughs> yeah. everybody, and they're in a state of total confusion. I like my my thought better, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, with that, you know, since there is uh, no more questions, you know, we obviously can go to the next slide, talk about the meeting schedules coming up, and you know, and <clears throat> and then you know, adjourn this meeting. So right now, we we only have uh, next week planned out as far as you know meetings uh, for answer hours and then we're going to start to work on a on a cadence for the future um, upcoming so that we're able to uh, 
you know, to meet the needs of, of obviously all the stakeholders and then um, give ourselves some time to um, start working on some of these uh, these things that are coming up as new requests so that we're able to identify them and quantify them. So you'll be seeing a lot more communication coming out in the weekly communication on this. Uh, this week's communication um, will have some, or not this week, next week's communication will have a survey on some, uh, you know, so that we want the community to to weigh in on, and we will, uh, you know, kind of go from there. So with that, those are all my updates and everything I have. If there's nothing else, then we will uh, we can adjourn. There are no other questions in the chat. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.